Welcome back. Let's try section 1.3. Um, 1.3, let me move my drink here. 1.3 is about how we do sampling. And we talked about in the previous sections that about the population and the population with a parameter and the parameter about say then we do sampling because in the last section I talked about cost and a lot of people don't realize how much it does cost us to run that census every 10 years but that's the cost of running a study on a full population so we do things by sampling and the biggest thing i can tell you about sampling is that it needs to be random so how do we do random sampling well let me screen share here let's go to our notes all right so it starts out talking just like I said, 1.2 sampling. So before we can begin to do our survey or study, whatever, we have to identify the population that we are targeting. And we do that with a process called Like I previously mentioned, random sampling. I ain't in the mood for yellow to this time. Let's go a different pretty color. And random sampling, we use chance as much as possible to select individuals out of the population. Now, you can read from page 24, results to be reliable, characteristics of the individuals, have to be random. And right there, it's just reiterating. So if we choose, that's the reason why this piece is highlighted, if we choose to do something convenient, our study is meaningless. Absolutely meaningless. And a lot of times you can catch national studies that, eh, yes, you went the more convenient route. An example being, there was a study that was mentioned about religion. Now, when I bring up some studies, it's not to cause any issues or anything. It's a lot of times stays are hot topics. That that's what we go for. All right. So the study I'm mentioning though is about religion, and it's in one of the hot topics. That they did a survey that showed that religion would be dead in 10 years. Well, this study was done back in the 90s. I don't know about you, I still see quite a few churches around. But here was their flaw. They did the study based on a church camp in Wisconsin. There was no randomness to it. This is what we mean when we say, unless you take a proper sample and your sample is random, if it's not, the study's no good. But people were touting this, and that was a major flaw in that study, was how did they pull the people? Well, they were talking to, well, this church camp basically was dying. And that's what it was. There was the younger generation wasn't going to the camp anymore. And it, it but you can't base an entire population of church and religious people on one church camp. So this is what this whole bit's talking about. It has to be random. It has to include 
a proper dissection, a representation of the population. So, we do our best that when we're doing these samples, that we select from all over the United States. We don't want just one little small area. I, I don't want to pull people in Florida to make an assumption about people in Washington State. Can't get much more off farther apart. Or how about Maine? Two different lifestyles, two different climates, the whole kit and caboodle. So this reason why I'd like a few people from Florida, a few people from Maine, a few from Ohio, a few from... But that's not convenient, and it does cost more. Okay? Now... The number of the individuals in a sample is always less than the number of people in the population. Now, some of you are probably sitting there saying, well, yeah, because it's supposed to be part of the population, but we actually declare it. Now, I want to talk about symbols we have all sorts of symbols. If I use a capital N, that tells me the size of the population. If I use a lowercase n, that is telling me the size of the sample. So you're about to see quite a few symbols coming at you here before long. I don't like that. Let's see if I can't clean that up. There, I like that a little bit better. But if it's a capital N, that's the proper symbol to tell people like me that, hey, I was studying a population, that's the size of the population. I write a lowercase n, you tell statisticians, this is symbolic, that the size, that was the size of the sample I took. All right? And that's what this whole little box is talking about. This whole box is this in a nutshell in the green. All right? So... frame I'm talking definitions and yeah de I'll be honest talking definitions about as boring for me as it is for you guys to hear them but that's okay I have to do this so that you understand when we talk so what is a frame a frame is the list of all the individuals within the population all right so we pull a frame and a frame could be all people who own dogs and the list. That would be a frame. Now, we have two ways of pulling samplings. First way is a sample without replacement. So... That is when we select something or a person or an object. And once we've selected and used it in our study, we do not put them back in the population. Thus, mathematicians really aren't real creative when we name stuff. You haven't figured out yet. So when we sample without replacement, it's like pulling a card from a deck of cards and not putting it back in the deck. All right. Or, I sample with replacement. I pull the card, I put the card back in the deck. Chances are, next person pulls a card, they could pull that card again. Well, that's sampling with replacement. When we sample without replacement, we use you you go to the wayside. You won't get put into the study again. 
a sample with replacement, we put you into the study, we put you back into the study, we put you back in the state. Each time you get chosen, you go back into the group that could be chosen for the next round of the study. This is very common because we want to take as many samples as we can to make sure that we're looking for a nice representation of the population. And as long as it's random, the odds of getting chosen more than once is on the slim side. All right. So let's talk how we can conduct a random sample. And there's more than one way. One. I can list all the reps because this is how I'm going to select five members of the comp of House of Representatives to go to the president's lunch. Well, I could list all the reps and assign each rep a number one through 435 because there's 435 members. Then I draw the number out of the hat. I can do that. That's one way. Let's do this a little different. Because first step, I'm going to make less dip. But then after that, I could draw them out of the hat. Or I can... Use a technology like your calculator and do a random number generator. Do that. Or I can use a random number table. That is what you're looking at below. Okay. How does a random number generator work when it's a table? Well, understand we're looking for numbers between what? 1 and 435. That's three digits long. I have to have a starting point. So you're given a starting point in your homework. Normally, it's kind of like throwing the dart. So in this case, it says use row 3. So that would be this row. Let's see. Well, let me draw on it. I don't think I can. I was hoping I could. <laughs> or no, I can. <laughs> there we go. So it's telling me to start with row three. That's what this part's telling me. And it's telling me to do column six. Well, that's this column. Okay, now where the yellow and the turquoise cross, that is my starting point. Right there's my starting point. But I want it to be three numbers long. So I tell students, draw a line. And count three more over. Draw a line. Three more over. Draw a line. Because it helps you visually. I'm saying three numbers because it's my biggest number is three digits long. What if my biggest digit, I mean biggest number I could have was four digits long? 
then I would section this off by fours. But I start right here. So I need numbers between 1 and 435. Is 920 between 1 and 435? No. So I come to the next one, 095. That is between 1 and 435. 539, no. 971, no. I start to the back to the top. This is the reason why I said section it. Go ahead and draw the line straight down. 481 would be the next one. No. 982, no. 677, no. 593, no. 386, there's another one that's between 1 and 435. All right, next number, 133. We have another winner. I'm right now at three reps picked. This is how we can do Randall. 456. Is 456 between 1 and 435? No. 632? No. 420? Yes. Barely, but yes. 480? No. 534? No. 200? Yes. If I didn't have five yet, I would start back up here and give another three over and go 0, 021. But I have five, right? I have five. Right? Not too bad. Okay. Now, in this class, we're not going to be using R, but we will be using Stack Crunch. Now, to do it in Stack Crunch, let me switch over. This is not exactly your class, but it's still a statistics class, so it really doesn't matter. I just all right. So all it is, I went to again. I went to my lab, open this. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to Stack Crunch. Stack Crunch website, second option. Open Stack Crunch. Now, how do I do a random number generator in Stack Crunch? It is data. Simulate discrete uniform. All right. I want rows five because I want five members. I want them put in one column. The minimum would be one, and the maximum would be 435. All right. I can leave that or I can stack it. But as it stands right now, I have to tell you a fixed seat because otherwise, think about it, it's a random number generator. If I don't use a fixed seed, each one of you guys would come up with a distant different list of five. Now, officially they tell you the seed should really be between one and 435. Well, I'm gonna tell you it doesn't really matter. So that's 12, 12, 25. I'm just, right? And then we hit compute. All right, so there we go. We got six numbers. All 
All right, let's do it again. It's data, simulate, discrete uniform. Again, it is five, that's five rows, one column, between one and 435. Remember I said fixed seed? Let's try 432. Compute. See how the numbers changed? All right. So in homework and such, they're going to give you a fixed seed. So let's go back. So how did I do it? In Stack Crunch, I did selected data, simulate, discrete, uniform. I entered rows, five, columns, one, my min was one, my max was 435 because I went between one and 435. And then I had to add a seed. And then compute. There's the steps, All right? So here's a list of all 45 presents. Again, how can I run a sampling of eight presidents? I could do it via what? Pull a number out of the hat, the table, or Let's do it with stat crutch. So this time it's what? Data, simulate, discrete, I want how many selected? Eight. So that rose is telling you how many you're selecting, but I want to put them in all in one column. And it's between one and 45. I could actually do between 46, I'll be honest, because we do have a 46 president. All right? Compute. Okay? That is how you run a number generator. Now, I've done it three times. Please note, results hidden. Yeah, you can go back. Okay? Just because you delete a box in Stack Crunch, it puts it over there, you can bring it back. So, now, it's wanting us to do this with the eight presents using the table below, and it's telling me to do what? Row two. That's row two. And it's saying column four. So one, two, three, four. All right, so my starting point is where? Right here. Now this time it's between one and 45, which is two digits. The last time I did three digits. 
So this time, I'm going to section my table off in twos. And just because we're straddling a gap, it's okay. All right. So I'm starting with 46. And I want between 1 and 45. So 1 and 45. Is 46 between it? No. 48? No. 77? No. 46? No. 3. Oh, we got a 3. There's our first one. I'm down to the bottom. I come back up. 11 works. I'm trying to get some room there. All right, so 11 works. 64 does not. 92 does not. 9 does. All right, I'm up to 3. 53 does not, 97 does not. I go back to the top of the column, 44. 44 is between 1 and 45. 59, no. 6, yes. So how many do we got so far? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I need 8, I need 3 more. All right, I left off at 6. Here we go. Six. 55? No. 93? No. 11? Yes, but it's a repeat. You can't have repeats. Because what is this? What are we studying? We want a simple random. I'm looking back here. Of eight presidents, eight different presidents. Well, if I put 11 down, that's not a different president. So I can't reuse 11. So it brings me back to 81, no. 82, no. 77, no. 93, no. 86, no. 33, yes. All right, do I have eight yet? Nope. So I need to section off another couple. All right, this is where I left off, so I'm going to come up. Oh, looky, 45. 45 works. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need one more. All right, 45. Under 45 is 63. No. 42? Yes. There is number eight. So if we go back up to the table of presidents, who would we be looking at? Number three would be Jefferson. Eleven would be Polk. Nine would be Harrison. Forty-four would be Obama. Six is John Quincy Adams. 33 would be Truman. 45 would be Trump. And 42 would be Clinton. All I did is take these numbers back to this table and matched them up. All right. So, how are we feeling on this? Decent? Because this was section 1.3. This is, how do we do random sampling? All right. It's also your first introduction into stat crunch. Stat crunch you're going to learn to love. But that's it for this evening. Good luck.